Hey man, but that's awesome, man. You got to train with Gorman. I did not know that about you, man. Yeah. Um, around what time did you start, you know, actually fighting, you know, mm -hmm. taking a series, sparring, and then kind of making that transition from just, you know, being your dad's son in the gym and actually fighting amateur? Gotcha. Uh, so I actually started training at seven. Intentional training. Besides that, I was just running around the gym, hitting, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. hitting the speed back. But intentional training started at seven. I uh, couldn't get no fights because I was more advanced than a lot of people. So I eventually got my first fight at 10. Wow, wow. That was 1992, first Golden Gloves, February. Hey, while you're talking about, you know, fighting in the gym, being young, what do you think of, like, fighters who grew up in the gym? Floyd Mayweather, infamous, you know, four years old. Uh -huh. You see David Benavidi's son is like, two or three years old, already hitting yeah. the bag. Yeah. What do you think of that when, when little youngsters are born into the gym? I, I, I actually love it. You know what I mean? Um, it teaches certain discipline. At a young age, it te it brings about a certain confidence. At a young age, you know, um, it it it's just self awareness at a, at a very young age, and like I said, most of all, the self confidence. Hey, do you agree with uh, with the experts who say that you know getting at the age of boxing before ten, if you go on to make it a life where you're a pro, it makes a difference because you just become. You know, one with with everything from taking shots, ducking shots, uh -huh. you know, defense, offense, and being able to do uh, and get the advantage over others. Um, I can definitely agree. Um, it has helped me because uh, I actually grew up playing baseball, football, soccer. Um, boxing transcended from each sport, so it brought an inner. I got to keep going back to that confidence, yeah, yeah. that inner confidence to play other sports, yeah, yeah. and I just come right back back, back around to boxing. Head up, so chest I agree out. with it, yeah. Head up, chest out, right? Yeah. yeah. You got a lot of confidence. Yeah. And hey, you talked about, you know, making your uh, amateur uh, first fight or debut, I don't know uh -huh. where it would be, Ten, at yeah. 10 years old, man. What yeah. weight was that at? Uh, 75 pounds. 75 pounds. Yeah. Dang. Did, let me ask you this. Do you remember who that person was? A uh, dude named Jason White. Jason I, White. I don't think you ever forget the first one. Yeah. And the funny thing, I actually, I would beat him up in sparring. Okay. And he beat me in the fight. Yeah, yeah. He stepped it up, did he? Yeah, he, he stepped was, it up. Was he making his first fight too? Or he yeah, he, he actually was. That was so, his first so, fight. So both of y'all still out there. Hey, man, yeah. is Jason White still around? Do you know? I have no idea. Hey, hey, we're, hey Jason no White, idea. if you're watching this, man. Hey, What's up? Say, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, man, amateur yeah. background, you know, a lot of people, they grew up in the sport. You know, they fight a lot of guys. You know, these mm -hmm. guys go on to be pros, world champions, undisputed. Who are some of the guys that you've seen in the amateurs that, that you fought and, you know, that went on to become big names? So, that I, I well, I saw, I've seen quite a few. That I actually fought, I think, B.J. Flores, okay. uh, Terry Smith. But I think B.J. Flores is one of the most known that I fought in the amateurs. Okay. Um, at, that, uh, at that time, he was ranked number one in, as a heavyweight, number one as a light heavyweight, won the Eastern Trials. So... I didn't, I actually didn't fight a lot as an amateur. I only had 18 amateur fights. Oh, shit. I just grew I up in the gym. I just yeah. I, just I only that. had 18 amateur fights because I was fight Golden Gloves, go play soccer, football, and baseball. You had more, you had more pro fights than amateur fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's all. Hey, but shout out to Bill, Bill, BJ Flores. BJ Flores, yeah. 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 You're making money on uh, training Coaching. with the Paul. Yes, sir. Hey, shout yeah. out BJ, man. If you're watching this, man, shout yeah. out to him. He followed True Boxing Heads. He's a real one. Yeah. Hey, so you, I did not know that, man. So you only yes, had 18 amateur 18 fights. 18 amateur fights. Interesting. interesting. Turned pro at 19. Wow. Ain't that something. Yeah. At a young age. You yes, know? sir. Hey, speaking of pro career, man, mm -hmm. uh, you had more fights uh, total. How, what was the total amount? Uh, 41, I think. Ain't that some, that's some old school right there, yeah, man. You yeah. Fight. I mean, you fought everyone. You know, yeah. obviously you didn't win no world titles. You did sure. mention at, at the beginning that you were ranked as high as 12, 12 or 13, 13 in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you fought a lot of names. You yes, know, sir. I, I can't go off the box wreck off the top of my head. It's yeah. been a long day, but I know I've seen you on ESPN fighting Chris Ariola. i seen you on Showtime fighting Malik Scott. Yeah. Um, you know, how was it fighting those big names and just um, your amateur career? Or your pro career? In the pro career? Yeah. So I, I learned a lot, man. Um, I was actually still on the job training because I didn't have amateur, a good, extensive amateur background, but my talent wouldn't allow me to fight the guys at the same level as me. So I had, to, once I fought Deval Williamson, nobody else wanted to wanted to fight me, right? So it was Touch of Sleep, one of the, uh, I think, Olympic alternate 2000 yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that. So I fought him in the pros, um, Areola. I, I fought at least seven, either world champions or former world champions. Hey, man, how was it, uh, you know, 
fight with uh, Chris Ariola, who, who went on to have a hell of a career. He yeah, for a champion. sure. Yeah, champion and yeah. always everything. Yeah, but you know he was a, a, a fighter's fighter, Stop. fought yes, everybody, sir. and come out of slang yeah. and bang with it. What do you think? I uh, I enjoyed it, man. I took that fight on six days' notice. Oh wow, did I know that? Yeah, I took that fight on six days' notice. And it, this is no excuse because yeah, I still man. took the fight. Yeah. Um, my dad had a stroke, so my wife at the time wor helped work the corner. Oh, wow. Did I know but, that? Either? Yeah, man. Uh, but I enjoyed being in the ring. Don't with tell me you had title shorts. I'm joking. No, nah, I know, right? <laughs> no, I actually enjoyed that opportunity because I learned a lot from that. What I learned was those guys at that level, not necessarily a one-punch knockout power, but they carry their power over a long period of time. And I'm like, this dude, I'm hitting this dude, and he ain't going nowhere. And he's just getting stronger and stronger. And at that time, uh, Chris Ariola, the nightmare, was yeah. being groomed by Goose and Tudor yeah. to become what he eventually did. Yes, sir. Become. He That's was actually, he when I fought him, he was at at one of his lightest weights, I think 234. Did you make your debut as a heavyweight? As a cruiserweight. Your, oh, I did not know Yeah, that. so I'm uh, 193 pounds. And when, yeah, uh, Roy Jones Jr., Square Ring, is, was my first promoter. So I fought uh, cruiserweight, and what made me go up to heavyweight because I couldn't get fights at cruiserweight. So I was so big. I was about to say the opportunity the, too, probably yeah. you know, the, the heavyweights, yeah. big name. And we talked about. I mentioned uh, one of your other opponents, uh, Malik Scott. Scott. Yeah. Um, I remember when he fought Deontay Wilder. I thought it was going to be a hell of a fight, uh -huh. a man magnificent fight. You know, it comes out and gets smoked. Yeah. Um, it's okay. It happens for sure. But now he's a trainer and he's training Wild Wilder. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of that dynamic of Wilder and True uh, Malik student Scott? of the game. Malik is a true student of the game. I don't think he could do nothing but help uh, Wilder. I, so I was actually in camp with Wilder when he first beat Stavern. So I was one of the sparring partners then. So to, to be in the ring with him, to be in the ring with Malik, to see that combination come together like that, it's nothing but good things. Hey, speaking of Wilder, man, uh, had some wars with Fury. For sure. Um, obviously has some left in the tank. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of Wilder? You know, who would you like to see him fight? Um, in all honesty, man, I think whoever he fight is going to be exciting. You know, uh, Joshua, Ruiz, you know, if those fights can happen. I really don't want to see him fight Fury again, you know, because yeah. we've seen that yeah, one already. Yeah. But I, I, any fight with him... I think it would be exciting. I think he smokes AJ. That's just my opinion. Uh, I do too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but the resurgence of AJ is, is maybe at hand with Derrick James. Shout out to Coach Derrick yeah. James, one of the best coaches in the game who happens yeah. to be out of our neck of the woods. I just don't see it. I think it's more yeah. on AJ, not on Coach. Man. For so, sure. So yeah, it is, it is here mental. For sure. And, and it, it, for me, it's a little bit on the chin side. I don't know if gotcha. that's per se, but you see the fights. But I will say this. The right coach can adjust you mentally. Maybe I maybe should have made that transition uh, before a little the Usbek <laughs> rematch. Gotcha, gotcha.